Hello everybody, and welcome to a live playthrough of Legion Champions of Valdiria playthrough. So Legion's Champions of Valdiria is a fantasy expandable card game designed by Raymond Greaves uh, with EGAD Games. And I've already done a little setup video, so I'm not going to go through how all of this setup came to fruition. You're welcome to check that out on YouTube. Uh, we're just going to go right into gameplay. Uh, and so when we did the setup, uh, what we saw is that um, our champion, Nokura, is the first player this turn. So he has received an initiative token, which gave the champion, Kasila, um, what we call a Aegis token. So she can re-roll any die on her turn, um, or she can save it for the rest of the game. Anyway, uh, so, and I went through all the different commands that you can do each turn. So I'm just going to choose commands and play through the game as I would, just a two-player game. Um, Nokura's hand is over here, so he's got a hand of five cards, and he has to make important decisions on what actions to take each turn, because after each command he issues, his opponent gets a command, and it's a very interesting back and forth uh, to decide what's important now and what can wait till later. Um, so, the first action Nokura is going to take is to try to destroy this assassin. This guy's actually pretty dangerous. He has a plus five melee attack, you can see at the top of the screen, and, um, just a dangerous guy to be around. So uh, the person who's going to try to take care of him is the Stone Splitter. Stone Splitter is going to do a strike at him. Now he can do that because he has a melee attack and he's within one range of him. He's right next to him. Um, so in order to do a melee attack, what happens is you spend that um, character by turning him 90 degrees and then he will initiate an attack roll. And what's going to happen is he's going to add that plus two to his attack roll in an attempt to hit this guy's armor value of nine or defense value of nine. Uh, so he has a pretty good chance of doing so. I'm going to roll the die. And we have scored a 13 plus two is 15. So that means that our stone splitter is going to do one damage, always one damage unless the card tells you otherwise, to Fury Striker. So what would happen is we would take a wound token and put it on Fury Striker. And if that... Uh, character has a number of wounds equal to or higher than their wound marker on the bottom right of their card, they will perish. So um, thankfully Stone Splitter was able to destroy the Fury Striker before he could do his assassination attempt. So he goes right to the discard pile and uh, characters can realign here but um, there's a rule that if, if we were down a certain number of characters we'd have to force rank people upwards. Uh, that's not the case this turn but just wanted to realign them to showcase that. All right, and that would be the end of Nokura's tur er, turn. Yeah, and it flips over to Kasila. So Kasila, now the victim of an attack from Stone Striker, has to decide how does she want to respond. And she can do all of these different commands herself as well. So does she want to go right in and attack, or does she want to use a card that she has at her disposal to uh, make the long game a bit better? Um, hard to say. Um... So she has uh, perform two plus X strikes, full action. Perform. Uh, so she's got um, fire bolts. She's got autumn's breath. She can move forward or backward to rank. She can do a scatter. Um, she's going to try to support her heroes by using autumn's breath. It's a single action, which means that she doesn't have to do a full action by rotating. Uh, she just does the action itself and it expends that spell. So she's going to use that spell to join to second rank. And why would I want to bring my champion up if the purpose of the game is to um, save your champion? Good question. We'll see how this pans out, but she wants to become a more dominant player in her game. Uh, now what I've done is I've moved my character into a spot that makes uh, my play illegal, which means that I have to force another one of my characters up because uh, you can never have more people in a higher rank than in a lower rank. So by Casilla moving up, she is forcing another character to move up and expend themselves. Uh, so we'll say we're going to move this character up and they have to uh, be spent. So now there are um, at least uh, less or equal to in the second row than the first row. Alright, so that's her part of the turn. We go back to Nakura and he uh, sees that he's got some more actions he can take here. Um, he may want to continue to destroy the characters in the front line before building up his back line. So let's say he's going to use his uh, boulder golem 
and that boulder golem is going to do a strike of their own. They only get plus nine. Um, and so who do they want to strike out at? It's going to try to strike out at the uh, Tanu Protector. That protector is building up adjacent characters. So he's going to roll his die and see what happens. He rolled a massive 18 uh, plus zero attack, but 18 naturally beats um, the Tanu Protector's 10. So he uh, does a wound to it. It only has one wound marker. So it's going to go to the discard pile. All right, we go back to Kasila, and she's a little frustrated. Her army is getting decimated right in front of her, but she moved up so that she could cast this Firebolt spell. So how does that work? As a full action, she can do two range strikes, and the range attack value is equal to her level. So normally her range attack is a plus three. Um, instead, she's going to get a plus five because her level on the top left is a level five wizard. Um, but in addition to that, she gains plus three to um, range fire spells and plus three to save. So instead of plus five, she's actually going to do plus eight on her attack rolls here. So that's pretty brutal. And she's going to use it twice because she's going to do it as a full action instead of a single action. So what will happen is she is going to roll this die. And oh, she's going to target um, this run here, by the way. Uh, 15 plus 8 is 23. The apothecary didn't stand, I hope. Uh, she got burned alive by a firebolt. Uh, whoops, put that in the wrong discard pile. That goes over there. Uh, but not only that, um, she has a second attack because, again, it says perform two strikes. So she can choose either of these characters to do the second one to. The more dangerous one is Stone Splitter. Now, you might wonder why can I attack this far away? It's because um, when you do range attacks, it's always a range of two. So she couldn't have hit this row or get, gotten even close to Nakura, but by moving up, she gained access to hitting rank one. So she's going to attack Stone Splitter, roll her die, going to add eight to the roll, 27. Um, Stone Splitter has been absolutely demolished. You can see that that fire spell is pretty potent. Um, and he goes to the discard pile. Now what that's done is that is forced rank one to be less cards than rank two, which means Nakura has no choice but to send one of his characters forward. And that, to do that, they have to spend themselves, so they can't even attack on their turn. So now we're lined up like this, we're all legal, and same here, um, we're all legal on this side. Uh, having two characters and two characters. So that was uh, Kasila's turn, really an all-out battle starting right at the beginning here. So Nakura, now not in any position to do an attack, because the Granite Monk does not have a range attack, and he himself does not have a range attack. So now he can focus on... Um, seeing what he can do to build his board up. Uh, we've got a piece of ancient armor here, which if um, equipment can only be equipped on the same level plus rank, so this Granite Monk would have to be, is, is in rank two and is a level two character, so we could actually throw this armor on them and that um, as a monk, it's gonna gain them defend zero. So what is defend zero? That is an actual feat. So some characters have keyword feats. Defend means after they're targeted by a strike, they can succeed with a defend check to redirect the strike to this character. So what does that mean? That means if somebody else is attacked, he can pop in and do a defend um, action against an adjacent character to absorb that strike himself. Um, and because he has a higher defense, he might be able to save somebody that else that's in his line. So, cool piece of armor. Not sure if he wants it yet. Uh, we've got this Western Envoy. Um, I can't legally place that character. So, um, I would have to have Nakura up here before I could place that character there. So, you can move and force rank, but you can't place characters illegally, from what I understand in the rules. And Stone Splitter is level 1, so he would be played in the rank 1 line. Um, it's a real tough choice. What do I want to do here? Um, we're going to play another Stone Splitter in rank 1, and he's going to enter um, unspent or um, ready as the term is. So let me go back to Kasila. Uh, she still has this guy here, and so um, she's got a couple of spells left, or a couple of things left. Um, Mark of the Guardians as a piece of equipment that nobody can, uh, we could put on her. Um, spend Mark of the Guardians and target a character you control. Well, that's pretty cool. And scatter. Target an unwounded character within two ranks. Succeed with a magic check to either inflict a wound on them or destroy an item attached to them. 
So you'll see this card here is a spell. Uh, it has an action or a full action option, kind of like the fire spell did. So if I want to cast it, um, I have to have a um, wizard that can cast it. So my character has to cast it. And they can target. And uh, just one sec here. Gonna have to pause this. All right, so where were we? Um, going back here, we're going to cast Scatter. Uh, so Scatter can be cast by any character if they're a wizard, uh, but in this case, my only wizard is Kasila. So to Scatter, she has to be a level three wizard. She's level five, no problems there. Um, if she wanted to do the full action, she would have to be unspent, which she's not. Um, but she can do the initial one. So target an unwounded character. We're going to go after this guy here within um, two ranks. So. I uh, could target this monk or this golem, but we're going to go after uh, this new stone splitter and um, succeed with a magic check. So what is a magic check? Well, a magic check is equivalent to um, the target's combat score. So it's like attacking them. His, the magic check, I have to defeat a 10 uh, to either inflict one wound on them or destroy an item attached to them. So I don't have any bonus to non-fire spells. Um, I do have a plus nine um, to my skill, but this one isn't a skill check, it's a magic check. So basically I'm just going to roll this die and hope to get over nine. Rolled the wrong die. Um, succeed with a magic check equal to the target's uh, combat. So you either have to hit it or get more than it. Um, Stone Splitter has a nine. Just going to double check the rules real quick. Apologies for doing that mid-game here, but I want to see... you. Um, four spells if I actually do add my skill value. Page down. Actually, I can show you what the rule book looks like if you like. Uh, audio InDesign window capture. Yeah, there's a rule book there. Um, so as I look at this, I'm just going to double check what um, attacking strikes generated by spell do not receive standard item bonuses but they can get bonuses from the items ability text uh, event cards character cards item cards maneuvering ranks checks and saves some abilities may cause a character to roll for a check or a save they must roll a die and add their skill to the result if it's greater than the target number the character succeeds at the check or save so there you have it um, I'm going to turn off this view of the rule book there. So um, it says to make a magic check. So when it uses the word check, that means I get to add my skill value. So 9 plus uh, the roll, 18 defeats Stone Splitter. Stone Splitter takes one wound, according to the spell scatter, um, and it only has one wound defense. So he has been destroyed by the scatter. Casilla is on a rampage. Uh, we go back to Nakura. He's down to four characters, uh, including the one he just brought forth. What is he going to do? Well, uh, this guy can't go into rank three yet because it's illegal. Uh, we do have some armor we could strap onto this mage. So let's do that. This ar mage is going to wear this uh, cool armor here. Let's try to layer that right. Um, so now the mage, when he's... when um, if he goes to the first rank, he can help protect others. Uh, he doesn't gain any extra defense, mind, or he has one extra defense. So instead of 13, he has a 14 defense. So that was Nakura's move. We go back to Kasila. Uh, she still has a guy that could attack on the front line, but she also has two spells left. Um, so we're going to equip her with this lovely armor. Um, oops, keep that Aegis token, Aegis token over here. It's hard when I put it on the card. Uh, so she now is a mark of the guardians, and when she wants to, she can um, spend this mark uh, once a turn to give another target a bonus. And they don't even have to be adjacent, so that's pretty cool. Go back to Nakura. Um, Nakura's going to grab a steed. And we're going to go back to Kasila. Kasila is going to activate um, this mark. And what she's going to do is uh, a target is going to gain plus two 
Melee, defense, and skill until the end of the round. And if they're tribal, they gain plus one wound. For, so we're going to throw this on to this guy. So it's only for this turn, but this banner will show that he has a bonus. And um, you can see here, it gives them, if they're tribal, they also gain plus one wound. So forever, from what I can tell, he's going to have a bonus wound. Um, not sure how to mark that one, so we're just going to put that there. If I'm misreading and that's supposed to be till the end of the turn, then um, I'm sure I'll be corrected in the footnotes by Raymond. All right. So that's Casilla's turn. Uh, she endowed this uh, lovely tribal orc barbarian with a, a little bonus. We'll go back to Nakura's turn. He's going to ride his steed up. Um, so by using the steed, what me that means is he can uh, move forward a rank. You can use each action once a turn. You don't actually expend the steed, but I'm going to expend it just to showcase that I used it already this turn. Um, there are banner markers you can put on cards as well to indicate that an action has been used. All right, go back to Kasila. Now she has this stronger Heart Clan warrior. He's going to strike out at this monk um, with his ranged attack. So normally he gets plus zero attack, plus the um, uh, combat and defense of the highest level tribal character that's adjacent to him. So there's only one, so he's going to gain... Um, from their level. This guy's a level two. Uh, he's got two level twos, but his highest level is two. Um, and um, so he will gain plus two to his attack, and plus two to his defense, and plus two to his skill. So what he's going to do is roll, but not only that, he has an additional plus two here. So he's got a pretty decent bonus. Take a roll there. We have rolled a 20, which is a critical hit, a natural win regardless. Um, even without, we would have had much higher than this guy's 13. So we're going to do a one wound to him, which will kill this guy. And this barbarian is spent. We go back to Nakura. What is he going to do now? He's going to summon forth this guy now that he's got an opening in rank 3. I'm going to go back to Kasila. Um, she doesn't have anybody with a ranged attack. The only way that she could attack is if she could move this up, but she doesn't know if she wants to do that yet. Uh, maybe she will. She'll move this person forward um, into rank one. Go back to Nakura's turn. Uh, he's got a loot left, but not much you can do with the loot. Um, we're going to bring forth this monk this way. So that's still a legal move. And we go back to Casila's turn, and now that she's opened up rank 2, she can fit in this character here. Tar check. So he's level 2 wizard, level 2 rogue, but he's not considered level 4, he's just considered level 2. Go back to um, Nakura's turn, so now Nakura has a chance to strike out. Uh, this guy's got extra defense, extra wound, so maybe she wants to leave him alone for now. Uh, that person has a 12 defense. This person has a 9 defense, and she has a plus 1 attack. So, and not a fighter. So we're going to spend this character and going to strike out at, um, whoops, strike out at tar check. So we're going to roll the die. So we have rolled a natural 14 plus um, 2, plus 1 for her attack. 15 against 9. She does one wound. That guy only has one wound defense, so that person is destroyed. The ranks are still legal, so nothing happens to either team there. We'll go back to Casila. What is she going to do now? Um, she could strike back. She still has a chance to attack, or she can move Tarchek up one. Um, she's going to strike back against this guy while he's spent. He's only got one wound. So she will spend, uh, and so this is a moment where this armor takes place. If this character is a monk, monk it gains defend. After an adjacent character, which is him, is targeted by a strike, which he has been, she can do a defense check to redirect the strike to this character. So let's try that just for fun. I'm going to do a defense check. So a defense check, you add your skill to your roll, and um, for any of these checks, the natural roll you have to succeed at is a 20. Um, so she only has a 2 plus 1 is 3, so her um, her check has failed. 
so she doesn't get to defend this guy. So then um, the nature singer's attack still proceeds. Roll the die. Um, she rolled a one, which is a critical fail. Nothing happens to her, but she can't hit the guy regardless. So it's just a complete miss. Move back to Nakura's turn. Nakura has a chance to join the front ranks if he wants to put himself at risk. He's got a pretty, uh, pretty decent abilities. He doesn't have an earth card in his hand. Uh, what he should have done when he attacked last turn is looted, but we'll have to remember that for next round. Um, but we can move this guy up, Western Kingdoms. You can see he has three attacks, four, two, two. That means that when he attacks, he hits three separate times. So he's going to be pretty uh, dangerous once he gets to that front rank, but he has no range. And Nakura also has a double attack, plus six and a plus five. So they're really wanting to get to the front lines. Go back to Kasila. Uh, looking at um, any other action sh they can do, they can't draw a card, they've maneuvered all their characters, everybody has activated all their abilities, they've performed all their attacks, so her, she's pretty much done for the round. Nobody can do anything except for this Tarchek could advance here. So let's do that. Uh, we go back to Nakura's turn. Uh, this guy was spent, sorry, because he moved forward a rank, but uh, Nakura can move up to the front rank, why not? Um, just to be part of that battle and get his strikes in. Now everybody's done everything that they can do, so that brings an end to the round. Uh, so this permanent plus one marker we're going to put up here. Uh, this banner we're going to put here. So we're going to ready everybody at the end of the round. Ready, 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 ready. And then I'm uh, just going to refer to the rules real quick at the round reset. At the beginning of each round, I believe everybody draws new cards. Um, so set up, we've already done recovery. Players draw from the deck till they have five cards in their hand. So if you did not use all your cards, you're actually missing out. So when I forgot to use that loot for Nakura, that's going to put him at a, a bad spot now, or at least uh, missing one action. All cards turn 90 degrees. Um, so if they were stunned, which none of them are, they'd become spent. We'll talk about that when it happens. Uh, we're going to roll initiative. The player that wins gets the initiative token. The player that loses gets the Aegis token. And then we'll go back to the command phase and start this over again. So let's roll initiative. 19 and 1. So um, Nokura is definitely not going first. So it means Kasila gets the initiative token. And um, Nokura gains an Aegis token. All right. And what does Kasila want to do this turn? Well, we've got uh, Nakura, Dangerous Guy, right on the front lines. Um, let's draw cards to see what she has at her disposal first. And while we're at it, we might as well draw Nakura's four cards, because you only draw until you have five cards. So again, that was an oversight by me last turn. Really got to play your hand out properly to get full use of them. And your hand would normally be revealed. I'm just doing this for the sake of gameplay. So she has a flame wave. Ooh, that one looks dangerous. A lightning bolt, a black iron berserker, a level three orc. She has a loot, which is good after regular attacks or after killing an opposing character. It can be any kind of attack. And then copper fang hunter is another level three. So this is a prime opportunity now that Nakura has entered the front rank here for her to initiate a flame wave. Uh, to cast this, she has to be a level four wizard, which she is. It is a fire spell, so she's going to get a bonus. And uh, what's going to happen is it's going to take up a full action on her part. So she can't do her regular attack because she's investing all of her energy into this flame wave. Usha. She's going to target all characters within two ranks. Um, now, I'm going to make an assumption here that I wouldn't actually hurt my own characters with a flame wave. Um, Ray, you'll have to correct me if I'm misplaying that, because uh, if Flame Wave hurts my characters, I would have to be up one rank. And maybe that's the idea. I'll target, char target all characters within two ranks. You know what? I'm going to play it as it reads, so we're not going to play that spell yet. Instead, we're going to set... Um, oh, and she can't move forward a rank either. She, she doesn't have a steed. Okay, so maybe Flame Wave does have to wait, unless I really want to burn up my guys or wait till my guys are almost dead. So we'll save Flame Wave. Instead, I will um, build up my... Uh, 
so many decisions to make here lightning bolt perform a it's a full action plus seven strike that inflicts an additional wound after the strike they must make a save or spin now that looks like a good spell so this is going to take a full action again it's a level three spell so she's going to we'll say flame wave for a future turn if there is one perform a plus seven rain strike that inflicts an additional wound so she's going to make a strike um, and it's not a check it's a actual strike so we're going to add seven to my roll and we're targeting nakura here because he's on the front lines he's got a 15 defense so he's hard to hit let's see if she does it three plus seven is ten that spell misses after the strike the target must succeed with a magic save equal to their character's thing or spend um, so it doesn't say whether the strike has to succeed or not so because it doesn't say it has after the strike the target must succeed so let's say he has to make that roll anyway maybe it's a dual effect spell so he rolled a 10 and he adds his skill of 7 so he has 17 and they have to make a magic save equal to this character's star so of 9 so he exceeded it anyway but if he had failed he might have had to turn sideways so that spell goes for the discard Casila unfortunately missed out with her lightning bolt it happens uh, it did have a fire actually it's air and fire so she would have had plus three to that attack um, but she still would have only got uh, three plus 13 or three plus ten is 13 against his 15 so she still would have missed Casila's turn is over Nakura is mad he's getting hit in, hit in all different ways here but that's okay now he can do some bashing We've got a cleave action here interrupt when this character kills target character with a strike banish it instead of sending it to the discard pile and then perform another plus three strikes so look at that that's pretty cool um so we're gonna get some nakura action here nakura is gonna do a strike at um, the nature singer so he gets two attacks. His first attack is targeting the nature singer. He's going to roll his attack. He rolled a five plus his six is 11. Nature singer has a 12 defense and he doesn't have any bonus attack power. So unfortunately he missed and we cannot do the cleave. So he's going to attack again with his second attack. He rolled a 10, 10 plus six is 16. So he has hit and he is actually going to kill because he's going to do one damage. Um, and I chose not to use the Aegis token, by the way. Uh, I could have done that to reroll. But uh, when this character kills target character with a strike, which he just did, banish the character, so they're out of the game for good. Um, and perform a plus three strike after this strike resolves. So now Nakura gets a free action with a plus three bonus. So he's going to strike out at this Harkland warrior. We roll. Critical fails. No matter all my pluses, I miss the roll. Sorry, Nakura. Tough roll. But I can expend this Aegis token to re-roll that. Let's try that instead. Uh, 4 plus 5, because the second attack is a little bit weaker. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 plus 3 more is 12. 12 against the Heart Clan Warrior is 9, but he also gains bonus equal to the highest adjacent tribal character. Uh, so this guy would be considered adjacent he's level two so he'd have 11 defense um, he gets hit and he takes a damage now he had a bonus wound from uh, this blessing earlier so he's gonna just he's gonna have uh, one wound left we'll just take that off to say he's down to one again all right so that is nakura's attack plus his bonus card um, nakura's turn is over we're back to kasila what is she gonna do to defend against this onslaught well, um, she could bring in some new troops instead. Bring in the level 3 Black Iron Berserker or Copper Fang Hunter. Now, the Copper Fang Hunter has a range strike, so he'll get into action earlier. All right, let me go back to Nakura's turn. So, Nakura has a steed. Um, we could toss that steed onto this Western Envoy. Um, and that way next turn he's going to get a chance to move forward for free. Go back to Casila's turn. Uh, she can't summon another level 3 guy because that would be an illegal rank placement. 
Um, I'm going to put this loot card here so I don't forget it. We're going to make an attack with the Heart Clan against this Boulder Golem. Just like last time, this character is going to uh, try to initiate a defend. So, um, gains defend zero. So initiates a defend. If he passes, he can defend for him. Critical fail. Unfortunately, that did not happen. So now this guy is attacking uh, this guy here. Roll. We have rolled a six. Six plus the adjacent of two is an eight against a nine. So unfortunately, he did not succeed. Um, so that's a miss. Go back to Nakura's turn. Nakura is going to fight back. Um, going to use the boulder golem against this tar check. So we'll expend. There's a real roll. Oh, pulled it off the table. Expend. There we go. 18. This guy absolutely obliterated tar check. So that guy's destroyed. And then he can trigger a loot spell. After killing an opposing character, look at the top three cards of your deck. Put one in your hand and shuffle the rest. So grab three cards, flip them over. Pick one of these to put in my hand. We've got a battle master, a crush action, and a charge action. Um, that loot required him to be level one, by the way, which he was. So, anyway, go back to this. Battle master has a double attack with uh, very high powers there. I like that guy, but he's a rank four, so he'd fall way back. Uh, crush and charge. And thinking of rank four, you can't actually place that unless you have somebody in rank three, if I understand the rules correctly. Um, Let's say we're going to grab a charge. I like that one. Right. So we're going to put these other cards back into the deck. And then it says to shuffle it, so I don't get to stack them in any order I want. So that was my action. I attacked, and then with a successful attack, I looted. Goes back to Kasila. Uh, she's only got three characters in a row now. I probably should have re-rolled, but I can't remember if it only applies to this character or to any character on the field. Uh, maybe I'll look that up real quick so I know for next time. Um, Aegis. Setup. Attacking abilities. Item cards. Checks and saves. Aegis token. Immediately after a character makes a non-initiative roll, you may remove an Aegis token from the character to re-roll the die. So I think uh, the way the rules said with initiative is the player with the lower roll adds an Aegis token to one of their characters. So I added it specifically to her so she can only apply the, the, the roll change to her. Uh, so you might want to be strategic on where you place that token as well. It might be better placed than somebody in the front rank. I digress. Uh, we'll go back to my turn. What can I do now? I'm saving my flame wave as a uh, scary attack next turn. Um, I cannot play the Black Iron Berserker. I can move him forward, but if I do, I'm going to force him to go upward stunned. So what I do is I say I'm going to move him forward. Doing so expends him, but then I create an illegal rank placement, so he has to go forward one more, or her, uh, but I'm choosing him, and that's going to make him stunned. When you're stunned, you're kind of upside down. Uh, and that'll take it. We'll see how that impacts the game in a minute. So that was her turn. Back to Nakura's turn. We've got some armor. We've got a Dwarven Swordsmith. Um, and now that this guy's moved forward, we can drop this Swordsmith back here. Go back to Kasila. She can now play this guy into rank 3. Go back to Nakura. He's going to give his swordsmith some armor. He's just building things up for fun here. Um, go back to Kasila. She can't play her flame wave. And she can advance her orc. Then we go back to Nakura. He could initiate this charge. Otherwise he's going to lose an extra card like I did that other turn. So as a full action, move forward a rank. Then if this character moved into the first rank, it can perform a melee attack without spending. So it's full action. You have to be a level three warrior or a monk. This guy's a level three monk, so that is fine. Um, and so he's got, 
he gets a double blessing here. He gets to move forward. He gets to attack once. So he's going to attack um, this guy here. Without spending. He's got 5 plus 4 is 9. He's going to do 9 against this guy. But he's got a higher defense. He's got a plus 3. So he misses. Um, so that uses up this card's action. He moved forward a rank and he got a free melee attack. Uh, but it took a full action, sorry. So he is actually spent by doing that. Ah, sometimes grabbing stuff on tabletop simulator is tricky. All right, so back to Casilla's turn. She's running out of options. Flame Wave can't use. Everybody is um, used up. She never did get to use her loot card because uh, didn't play that one right. So we're back to Nakura. He decides he's going to move forward his dwarf, get him up to this rank, expend him, or um, spend him, and back to Casilla. She's got no actions. Back to Nakura. Might as well attack. Um, so he's going to strike out at, um, this guy's not going to do anything next turn anyway, so he'll strike out against this Heart Clan warrior. So she will, or he will roll this die. And we have the result of a six plus one is seven. Didn't hit him. Another fail. All right, and that ends the round. So ending of the round, we ready our characters. Uh, so this guy here, because he was stunned, he only readies to the 90 degrees. So he's going to be in a spent state this next turn, which is unfortunate for him. Everybody else is in good shape. Then we're going to draw up to five cards. So again, strategically playing every one of your cards gives you a distinct advantage in the game. Uh, and unfortunately, Casilla's team did not do that. Flip, 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 flip. All right. Gonna grab the initiative. Uh, so roll for initiative. Nakura has a seven. Casila has a nine. So Casila keeps the initiative token, and Nakura's team gets this token. So Nakura is gonna give it to this guy here because he has that defense roll that he might want to use as well. All right. Um, so Casila gets to go first. She has to figure out how can she do some damage to that front row. She's got a flame wave that could do two strikes and they're within range. Or sorry, uh, a fire bolt, lightning bolt, loot, and flame wave. Oh my, this guy has three attacks, but his bonuses are not high. Uh, this guy has two big attacks. She could try to bolt that guy, but then again, she puts herself in a position where she couldn't use her flame wave. Target all characters in a rank within two ranks. Oh, I did misread that. Okay. She's going to play the Flame Wave. So let's read it actually how it reads out here. Flame Wave, target all characters in a rank within two ranks. So I'm going to choose this rank. All of those characters must succeed with a magic save, which is five plus this character's bonus skill of nine. Um, and she also has a plus... Uh, three to saves. Um, so I believe she's going to empower the spell to actually give it plus 12 because she's really good with fire. So they have to make a magic save and roll 12 or higher or suffer a wound. Everyone in this row. Pretty devastating. It's going to use up her full action. So she'll be uh, spent. Um, so we're going to go down the line here starting with Nakura. He's going to make his save roll. So he rolls an 8 and he adds his 7, so he has 15, which is more than 12, so he does not take a wound. Then we move on to the Granite Monk. Granite Monk rolled a 17, plus 1, so 18, beats 12, so he does not take a wound. Then I move to the Boulder. 13, plus 0, so he rolled a 13, does not defeat 12, so he does not take a wound. And then this uh, big guy here rolls a 19, Plus five, he succeeds on the save. The flame wave has actually missed everybody. Sorry, Casila. That's unfortunate. Uh, so we go back to Nakura, who's laughing wildly at the, 
the, the failed flame wave that Casilla desperately tried to put on his army before they smash up her front row. Uh, such is the breaks, but he's got cards in his hand as well. He's got a couple of cleaves and crushes, so he's really got some devastating actions here. He's even got a desert dragon, which um, nobody can ride right now, but he does have one. Skyborn Rider is a paladin, which would go in the two rank. But let's say he wants to start off by just smashing this front row. Um, oh, just one cleave. So what does cleave do? When this character kills a target, he gets to do another attack. So let's say um, we're going to smash in with Nakura. Nakura does that. Um, you know what? He's got a special ability where he could just get rid of this dragon. It's an earth card. You can see in the description there, earth steed. So he gets rid of the desert dragon as an action, which means he doesn't have to rotate. He's going to discard that card and target a stone guard character, stone guard character in his rank. All these guys are stone guards. So let's target uh, the Western envoy. They're going to, um, they could either remove a wound, nobody's wounded, or they may perform a free strike. So he's going to perform a free strike against this uh, this guy here. Free strike, he has 12 plus 4. I assume I take the first value. It's his first attack. 16. He's going to do 16 against this guy's 9 plus 3 is 12. So he's killed him. He only has one defense. So I smash that guy. Uh, and didn't even have to spend any anybody's character, just the card itself due to his action. So that was cool. Uh, this causes a rank issue in Casilla's side. So somebody's going to have to move forward. She's going to choose not to move herself forward because she doesn't want to put herself at risk. So her barbarian has to spend to move forward to rank and make her rankings legal again. All right. Then we go back to Nakura's side. He's laughing. Do we have another Earth card? No, nope. so he can't activate that ability again. But um, he's going to be bold and make an attack against both of these guys because he has two attacks. His first attack will go against the Berserker. He rolls 9 plus 6 is 15. He's got no bonus there, so 15 against this guy is 13. Um, his ability doesn't help him in any way, so he's going to take a wound. Now he has two um, on his wound card, so he uh, survives the attack, but now going to attack that guy again. 15 plus 5, because the second, oh, sorry, 3. 3 plus 5 is 8, uh, so he does not succeed against his second attack. So then we go back to Casilla's turn. Well, um, she has the ability to perform this strike, perform a two, plus 2 strike. So we could target um, the Western Envoy, but he's got pretty good defense and 2 wounds, and this only does 1 wound. Um, or we could try to take out this granite monk who's a 13, he's got a 14 defense. We're going to go right after the monk. So we're going to roll this die. We rolled a 6. She adds 3, which is 9, because it's a fire spell. 9 plus 2 is 11. So she has missed again. She's not faring well. Her fire spells are, are failing her. Go back to Nakura's turn. Uh, we're going to attack out with the giant now, so he's going to expend to his first attack against this uh, guy here. 17, smites him, does a wound, can only take two wounds, so this guy is dead. Army is almost obliterated, but he does have a second strike, or a third strike. Uh, what I'm not certain, and the rules will probably clarify that later, but uh, if he gets a second and third strike, do they have to be against the same guy or a different guy? I'm going to play it safe and say that his second and third would have had to been against the same character because uh, that's who he initiated the battle with. Because um, uh, if you think about it, how could you jump and attack somebody else um, that fast? Unless you're Drift to Orden, maybe. Okay, so we go back to Casilla's turn, really hurting here. Uh, she's not going to get to use her loot card again because she hasn't actually killed anybody. Uh, she can play her Nature Singer or do a lightning bolt, but she takes a full action, so she can't even do that. So her really her only course of action is to place this here, but that would be an, an illegal action. Uh, I'm just going to defer to the rules real quick here. 
Um, make sure I'm not messing that up. Uh, you can play a character into a rank that matches its primary level as long as it doesn't create illegal. So I cannot place this because it actually creates an illegal ranking. You have to kind of set up for your characters in that way. So Casilla's entire turn round actions have come to an end. She can't do anything else. So Nakura gets to go to town. Um, he's obviously overwhelming her. And in the real battle, this is what happens, right? Um, you don't always get to even Stevens. Um, so... I never did use that cleave. We'll put that back there. So he's got lots of options here, and I'm pretty sure that he's going to win this game. So he's going to take it easy. He's going to play a level 2 character. It's his turn again. Um, and let's make sure I'm reading the rules right for turn sequence. So the player take transition commands back and forth until everyone passes consecutively. At this point, the round ends, and everyone has an option to discard unwanted cards. So if I'm reading the rules correctly, I will continue to play out all of Nakura's actions because he has earned the right to abso absolutely devastate Kasila. Um, so the boulder attacks. Roll. He's going to attack this guy. 15 plus 0. 15 against 13. He suffers a wound. Then this guy's going to attack. He's going to roll the die. 13... Uh, no bonus attack, so oh, 14. He actually gets two attacks. Didn't know that. So 14 against um, 13. He succeeds. That guy's already taken a wound, so this guy is dead. Um, and so what happens there? Well, we've created an illegal rank, which means that Casila has no choice but to move forward, and she actually um, ends up rotating into a stunned position. Go back to Nocturus. Um, Got a level 3 character, might as well play that. And he can still fill up his rank 1. So we can. Um, he's got a steed, no, no steed. Crush, no. Interrupt. Skyborn Paladin moves up, taps. This guy moves up, rotates. This guy moves up, rotates. And that's the end of the round. So we're going to um, ready our players, uh, draw our cards, up to five cards, flip, 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 flip. Uh, only getting two new cards for Casilla. She's in dire straits here. Did not play her sequencing well or uh, her spells failed her. Uh, so now what? We roll initiative. Roll initiative, see what happens. We have, oh, seven and four. So initiative goes to um, this side of the table, which means uh, Casilla gets another token. She's the only character she can choose. And then we proceed with the turn. So all they really have to do is beat the crap out of Casilla. Do we have any bonuses we can apply? That's when they target a strike, plus three. Strike hits, destroy an item attached. Why not? Nakura wants to beat down Casila, so he's gonna activate this. It's a react, so he's gonna target her with a strike, react with this spell or this event. He's gonna gain plus three attack. He's not a barbarian, so just plus three attack. And if he hits, he destroys an item attached to a character. So he rolls his die. He has a 17, so he definitely hits. 17 plus six is 13. 13 against her defense of 13, um, and she doesn't have any extra armor defense there. So, 13 damage or 13 uh, is a successful strike. Um, he's going to destroy the item that's attached to her character, and she can't do anything about that. So that goes there. Uh, this goes to the discard pile. So it gave him a bonus to make sure he hit and killed an item. So decent little effect there, and didn't take up an action for the turn. That was his first attack. She still suffers a wound, too, so it's not... Whoopsie. I moved my whole bowl full of goodies. I spilled all my wounds. Let's uh, rewind time there for a second. Pretend that didn't happen. We'll just take um, one of these and put it on her. But now he's still attacking the same character, so he's going to roll and do it again. He rolled a one, so he missed his second roll, but he has a he does not have a third attack. 
So we go to Casilla's turn. What can she do? Not a whole heck of a lot. She could equip this Legionnaire's Helm on herself. That would give her plus one defense and plus one wound. I think she'll do that just to... She is level five, so she's allowed to wear that helmet. Um, react after rolling initiative, place an Aegis token. Huh. Okay. So let me go back to uh, Nocturus's turn. What else does he have? He has a crush. He's got another, yeah, he's got another crush and a cleave. So we're going to strike out with this guy. He's going to roll to attack. He rolled a four on his first strike. Um, he gets plus four for his first strike, so he has eight. Um, oh, he has a power attack feat. What does that do? Power attack. After targeting a uh, melee strike, succeed with a power attack to have the strike inflict an additional wound. Hmm. You can probably only do that once a turn, so... I forgot to do it, so it doesn't apply for his first attack, and his first attack uh, misses Casilla. But he can proceed with the second attack. So his second attack, he's going to actually um, try to do a combination of moves here. He's going to... Is he a barbarian? No... Um, he's going to still use this to give himself plus three, and so he has plus three, plus two is plus five to his roll, and he's going to initiate power attack as well. So roll it. Oh, so close to a 20. We got a four. Four plus three is eight. Eight plus two is ten. That is not enough to hit Casila. You can see those champions are good at defending. Uh, he still has a third attack, but he can no longer power attack. And um, so we roll that. We have rolled a six plus two. We have missed again. All right. So back to Casila's turn. Uh, she can bring forth a level two character. Go back to Nocturus's turn. No, no, Kura's turn, sorry, mispronunciation. Um, we'll bring this guy into play. Go back to Casila's turn. She's going to bring this guy into play. Go back to Nakura's turn. Uh, we still got some things we can attack with here. Forgot about this gentleman on the side. So he has adjacent Stoneguard characters at plus one level for attaching weapons and armor. Oh, that's cool. Um don't think that's supposed to be flipped over. Okay. He is a... He's not a fighter. He's just a swordsmith. He helps others. And he's got a good attack, though. He's a 14 defense. Uh, so this character is going to make an attack against her. We roll the die. 14 plus 4 is 18. So 18, that is a hit. When we hit, we can cleave. We're going to, um, when this character kills target character, oh, he didn't kill him, so he's just going to do one wound. Then he can do his second attack. So we roll that again. Second attack was a critical fail, so nothing happens. Um, go to Casila's turn. So Casila, she has a loot and a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt, you need a level three wizard and a full attack action so we can't activate that so oh when she enters play until the end of the round tribal characters gain plus two defense uh, so Casila actually has plus two defense but that big roll would hit her anyway uh, Jason the Oathbreaker Jason strikes may not be cancelled or redirected ride plus seven. Oh, what does ride do ride Action. If this character has a steed attached, you can... Oh, he does not hook it. So... We can move her forward a rank. Which forces him to move forward a rank. Okay. Back to Nakura's turn. Got a couple guys left in the front row that can still do some damage here. Alright. This guy's going to actually strike out against her. Doesn't think he's going to hit no, the other one, so roll the die. Roll the three. Three plus two is five. Doesn't hit her. Back to Casila's turn. She is all out of actions. Back to Nakura's turn. The boulder roller is going to 
try to attack this character. We rolled a 19, so that is a hit and a kill. So we can initiate cleave. Uh, that card is banished, and he gets an extra strike attack. So put that over there. Oh, both of those. Um, so he's going to strike at her. Now she still has plus two defense thanks to that other card. Uh, that is a 17. 17 plus 0 and plus 3. So uh, 20. That is a hit. Nakura, after rolling initiative, no. So she's only, she's got 14 defense plus the 2 is 15, so 16 defense. She takes a third wound and she only is allowed three wounds, so she is dead. Decimated. Nakura and his super army have totally trashed the fire wizard and the barbarians orcs that were out to get her. Seems fitting. Um, what can I say? This battle is over. So there you have it. That was a full playthrough of a couple of test decks of Legion Champions of Valdiria. So what can we say about this game? Well, first of all, this is all um, original artwork specifically for this game. Uh, and got a nice uh, kind of a rustic painted feel. I, I, I like how it um, gives it those earthy tones. So that's pretty cool. Some of them have some uh, enhanced lighting, which is neat. Uh, in particular, some of these spells or um, magic items. Uh, so I like the art that's in the game. Um, I like the rank system. So as uh, Ray had mentioned, this, the, the concept of this... Uh, combat system or um, mechanic system was based off another game um, but still plays differently. Aegis tokens I didn't use too too much uh, but I can see those being beneficial particularly when you're at the front ranks doing real attacks instead of spells and um, the, once you're stunned that's kind of devastating and I guess I can understand that happens it's instead of dying you're stunned but uh, the force ranking uh, moving through here can make it really challenging to get all your actions in. Um, so I'm curious, if I played the game right, um, does Nakura really get to do all that extra stuff after this player is done spending all their actions? Uh, and I guess if you think of other card games, collectible card games like Magic or um, uh, Legend of the Five Rings or other games that are out there, uh, if you have a bigger board, you get to do more things. So it's just the way games roll. Um, the automatically drawing five cards at the end of every turn really makes you want to use every card you have so that you're getting more bang out of your buck each turn. So that's a, a decent mechanic until you're in the bind that I was in with Kasila. Then that card drawing mechanism really puts you at a disadvantage. So I don't know if there's a chance in the rules to be able to just discard cards you don't want so that um, you can have a refreshed hand at the end of the round. Uh, that might be something to consider. Uh, regardless, I, I had fun time playing it, even though I was playing against myself. Uh, I got to feel how both sides of the game uh, felt with these players. Um, the, the efforts of a magic user against an uh, out-and-out paladin fighter and their army was pretty neat. And uh, I look forward to trying it again. I think he's putting this on Kickstarter uh, near the end of June. I'm, dates are always subject to change because it's whenever the game is truly ready to be promoted and kickstarted. Um, but if you happen to see it on there, uh, have a look and give this guy back. I think he's developed a pretty neat game here with lots of cool visuals and lots to bring to your table.